there is one particular version of discrete time we care about, which is if you're in a Poincaré section, because this is how we connected continuous time flows, which we dearly love and integrate, to discrete time flows, whose utility we still doubt, but at some point you will become believers. We clearly should be able to compute what happens to any volume on Poincaré map because remember what the setting was we had a big space of all possible states it was filled with spaghetti or vermicelli, very fine spaghetti because every orbit was a fiber in the space and it had a property of not crossing any other, any other orbit so this is a really complicated thing for nonlinear flow the claim was that you could design a hypersurface, which is a section, Poincaré section, which is d minus 1 dimensional. So when you do your exercises for a slayer, it's going to look totally obvious in round 3, and then I cut it the section, it's a plane, so I can see everything. In real life, state space is, you know, 60 or 100,000 dimensional, because that's kind of problems we solve today, you know. 30 years ago we were very fascinated by parabola, but in research we don't do it, we are very high dimensions now because we care about more difficult things. You have to understand the Poincaré section is just one dimension less. So you have a million dimensions, you go to a million minus one dimensions. So you would think, you know, nothing is gained by this. It turns out it's a very intelligent step from million to million minus one. An immense amount is gained by it, so you will have to do Poincaré sections if you do anything in only dynamics other than just run computer forward in time. But if you try to understand things, that will be very important. So it's a manifold. Well, state space is kind of given to you up to coordinate reparameterization. You have to understand that nothing is really given because the same system can be done in you know, Korea and in Germany discover at the same time by the totally different coordinates but you know it's the same system it just somebody chose to do it differently so the state space is not sacred either it's only sacred by the fact that if I have a state the person in Japan has to have same state so for example Gibson, Halker and I computed some solution of Navier Stokes two people in Japan and one in England within same month computed the same solution. They had a prettier picture because they used coordinates. Editors of Israel letter-like. So their solution showed up on a cover of a Israel letter. Ours is just in some humble technical journal like Journal of Fluid Mechanics. And um, it took Gibson three weeks to prove it's the same solution. So, you know, it's the same world, we're solving the same problems. But just having state space in your coordinates doesn't mean you understand it in everybody else's. But what you understand when things exist, uh, if there's some invariant object in this space, it should exist in everyone. And that's why there will be such great emphasis on invariance in theory of nonlinear dynamics. This Poincaré section situation is much worse. There, nobody tells you what to do. You agonize, you look at the flow, and you finally decide, that if I put some very complicated curved surface, I will catch stuff that I care about. So they're always local, they're almost never global. They're very personal, you know, everybody gets a different one. Pictures in one are not helpful in another one, but for example, if I find the periodic orbit, whatever Poincaré section you got, you have to find that orbit as well. So that's a topological object. Time cannot destroy it. Change of coordinates cannot destroy it. So uh, while choosing these coordinates is this horrible thing that we always do in physics, uh, we seem to need them to do calculations. We don't know how to do calculations without being in coordinates. You have to understand all these things are coordinates and uh, you care about only invariant properties of the thing. It's intuitively obvious that if I have a neighborhood, so I take some, in this Poincaré section, I take a neighborhood. So these are points, this is called X of N, the center, and plus D X of N. 
And hat means that anything that has a hat in it is in the section which is embedded in the space, but it's in the section. It's quite obvious that as this thing progresses along, so this is a, a piece of a hyperplane that's being sent around, and it's quite obvious that at some point it should come back. And it'll come back in a distorted way. So what is not obvious, and it's also obvious that if you know how it does it in full space, we know how it does it in section. Because, you know, that's kind of obvious. I mean, you imagine there's a little thing being sent around and it pierces the section every place it's transfers. It's a small neighborhood and we design sections so they're open in large neighborhoods. So I'll get back. What's not obvious to me at least is that when I write a D minus D, my, when I write a Jacobian for the map and I write it for the flow, it's not obvious to me that uh, the multipliers of the flow will tell me what the multipliers of the map do, because map is chosen somewhat arbitrarily. We checked in the book some very complicated sections. If you can write it in a simple way, I'll be very grateful. I'll replace it in the book. But it doesn't lend itself to lecture. It takes a little bit too much time. So I'll just tell you what the main idea is. When you look in this small neighborhood in the Poncares, and you start with your point Xn, well, actually, it doesn't matter. I started with X in some place. I went around on the center of the trajectory, came back. So, you know, it has to be oriented, so it's oriented the way it is. It pierces out here. At this point, the velocity is evaluated. If you remember, Xn plus 1 is my flow map in full state space, starting at Xn. Pn is the return time. How long time I have to go to exactly land here. Okay, so that's something we compute, and that's how we compute the Poincaré return map. It's a function, it's this function. We give it a name. This is one step map, and it depends on where I started, which maps tend to do in nonlinear dynamics. Now, if I take a neighbor, the neighboring trajectory will take off. It'll do something. It won't be very different because, uh, you know, they're neighbors. It'll go, maybe it'll pierce this thing and end up here. So this will be x n plus delta x time t n. Because the neighboring trajectories don't return back in the same instant because the flow is shearing, you know, velocity varies every place. So they, they don't come back. To compute this, you have to compute this delta tau n to find the true intersection. This is really x n plus 1. <laughs> this is just where you ended up in a full world, tn times where starting with x. This is in full space. This one is in the section. So then you have to scratch your head a little bit. There are a few pages of algebra, unless you give me a beautiful derivation. It should be very short. The result is that J is a hat, one return time starting from Poincaré section and returning a Poincaré section is rank D minus one matrix. So it says morally, you know, you compute it in D dimensions, but morally it's one dimension less because I'm going from the section to the section, so I've gotten rid of one dimension. And more specifically, uh, you find that J of X prime times this vector here, well, evaluated at this point, that that's zero. So one of the eigenvalues of D plus a full matrix is uh, zero, and that means you know I'm not allowed to perturb along the trajectory. Nothing is gained. I'm only allowed to perturb transversely to it. That's what it means. You know that's the idea of Poincaré section. And then locally, you know, you can construct some coordinates in which, in local coordinates, you know, this is really d minus one, d minus one. Mate. But in general, you're working in your own coordinates, so it doesn't really, it's not obvious, it's d minus 1. 
Yes, it takes a little work to do this, but what you expect.